Hello, this is Andrew Perkins, and this is part two in creating a Cake PHP blog. You should already have Cake PHP installed and connected to your database. If everything is green, you're ready to go. You should have a table in your database called Posts. Uh, that's to store all of our posts for the blog. It should be named using Cake PHP's naming conventions by naming your table plural. As you can see, we have done that here with Posts. This video will cover all of the naming conventions for your file names and your class names. Uh, we won't be actually interacting with the database in this video. It'll be just so you can get to understand how to name your files and also uh, how to access your website online through the URL and understanding the different parts of the URL. So we'll start by creating our first model. Model file names are the singular version of your table name. We have a posts table, so that means we want to post file for our model. So it's post.php. You'll want to open up your PHP tag. And model files are classes, so you'll want to create a class. The class name is a camel cased version of the file name. So in our case, we have class post. All models extend the app model class. The app model class is what provides you with all of Cake PHP's model functionality. You'll also want to create a name attribute and set the name equal to the file name. So that's post. This helps Cake PHP link up the names. Uh, you don't have to do this. Cake PHP automatically does it, but it's good for PHP 4. So if you save that, that's all you need for creating your model. Next we'll create our controller. Controller file names are named directly after the table, but you append an underscore controller to it. So we have a posts table, so our controller will be called posts underscore controller dot php. So in app, under the controllers folder, create a new file. That's posts underscore controller dot php and you'll want to open up your PHP blocks and controllers are also class files so you'll want to create a class the class name is camel case and there's no spaces and you append the word controller to the end of your class name just like you did in the file name just you don't use an underscore so it's posts controller and all controllers extends the app controller just like in the model we extended the app model controllers extend the app controller this provides your controllers with all of cake php's functionality um, and lastly you'll want to also create the name attribute and set it equal to the file name which is posts in the controller your name will be plural and in the model the name attribute will be singular and that's reflected in the file names and you'll want to keep that consistent uh, the next thing we need to do is create our first action. Actions, you can think of them as the individual page that someone will view on your website. Uh, we'll create a simple action called hello world. You create an action just by creating a function. And it's actually, we'll do hello world here. And there we go, we have our hello world function. Uh, we now need to create a view for our action. All views that correspond to a controller should be inside of a folder, inside of the views folder, named after that controller. So inside of views, we want to create a folder called posts. And this posts folder will hold all of our posts controllers views. Uh, each action inside of your controller will have its own view and it's named directly after the name of the action. So inside of views in our posts folder we'll want to create a new file and call it hello world and that corresponds to our hello world action. The view files don't use a .php extension they use a .ctp extension so that's hello world.ctp and I believe that stands for cake template page so create that file and in here you can use HTML and PHP uh, we're just going to be using HTML to output our hello world message and that's just to show you how the uh, controller 
creates the act and, and links it up to the view file and then outputs it to the browser. So we can use any HTML we want in here. I'll create an H2 tag. And we'll create a paragraph tag as well. Saying hello world from our hello world action. And save that. And if you go to your browser, type in localhost and tutblog. That is the directory that our CakePHP installation is in. And hit enter. You can see CakePHP is installed. Now to access your files, the URL always follows this format. You'll type in the name of the controller, which is posts, followed by the name of the action. Our action, if you recall, is called hello world. So you type in hello world and hit enter. And there we go. You can see the uh, hello world statement and saying hello world from our hello world action is outputting to the browser. Uh, that is pretty much all of the essentials for naming your files, creating uh, classes, and for creating your views. And this is how you access it through the URL. It's just the directory that your KPHP is installed in followed by the name of the controller, and then followed by the name of the action. Uh, if you notice, there's this debug output down here showing you how long your query took and what uh, actual SQL was ran. I find this slows down my loading time on my pages while I develop, uh, so I like to remove it and turn it back on whenever I run into a problem. You can turn off this debug message by going into your app, into config, and open up the core.php file. And the first entry here is this debug with a value of 2. Enter in 0, 1, or 2. 0 outputs no errors, no messages, no warnings. It's used for production, so your users don't see anything. Uh, if you input a 1, that'll output all errors and warnings, but it doesn't show the debug messages. And if you put in a 2, it outputs everything, full debug messages, along with SQL output and uh, all errors and warnings. I like to set to a 1, that way I still get errors and warnings, but I don't get that debug messaging at the bottom. So save that, close it out, go back to your web page and hit refresh. There we go. You can see the debug messages have disappeared, and it's just our Say Hello World page. Um, so that is it for this video. In the next one, we'll start by uh, interacting with our database and uh, retrieving information from there.